you welcome back. Now, President Akufuado says government has committed $10 million as seed fund for the National Entrepreneurship and Innovations Plan, which was launched earlier today. The plan is set to stimulate the private sector growth, create more jobs, and expand the economy. Speaking of the launch, the president said the plan will also provide tax incentives to startups to help them survive in the early stages of setting up businesses. Despite the severe constraints of our public finances, which have resulted from years of mismanagement and corruption. Government has contributed 10 million United States dollars as seed money for the plan. It is the intention that this seed money should be leveraged to raise money from private sources and public organizations to the tune of 100 million United States dollars to fund its program. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the overall objective of this plan is to stimulate private sector growth at the early stages of businesses, to accelerate job creation, and to provide entrepreneurial Ghanaian youth with a critical alternative to salaried employment. It will help their businesses to grow and compete domestically and international. The National Entrepreneurship and Innovations Plan will, amongst others, one, provide tax incentives for startups owned by young entrepreneurs, two, incentivize and partner private sector investors to set up business incubator hubs and industrial parks for youth owned businesses nationally, three, establish a youth enterprise fund which will be leveraged to attract private capital to fund startups. Four, provide a ready market for the products and services of startups through the reservation of a percentage of the proposed 70% of local content public procurement contracts. Five, implement a buy local policy for ICT services from youth-owned businesses. And sixthly, set up an industrial subcontracting exchange to link large industries with small businesses and startups as a supply chain for goods and services. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm confident that this plan will be made to work to provide young people with what it promises. Young people who take the risk of entrepreneurship will find that they have support through the difficult early stages. I'm passionate about the plan. Meanwhile, President Akufuado has defended the recently introduced 3% flat VAT rate scheme. The policy, he said, and other tax reforms are meant to boost the national economy. We have abolished a lot of taxes, such as the 1% special import levy, 5% VAT on real estate sales, 17.5% VAT on domestic airline tickets, 17.5% VAT on financial services, 17.5% on selected imported medicines that are not produced locally, and have reintroduced the 3% flat VAT rate for traders. I know that some traders are having problems with the reintroduction of the 3% flat VAT rate. But I'm confident that as time goes by, the objectives of the policy will be better appreciated and embraced. All these measures are being undertaken to stimulate enterprise activity and growth. Very soon, we shall reap the benefits of more jobs and an expanding economy. Let's now look at some more issues on the economy. And Finance Minister Ken Uforiata is expected to present a review of the 2017 budget estimates to Parliament. The Finance Ministry has proposed July 26 as the date for the presentation, expected to review some macroeconomic targets in, the, in this year's budget. This is to ensure the country ends the year on a good note. Ahead of the presentation, some economists have been outlining areas the review should target. Economist Joe Abe tells Joy Business he wants the review to come up with some clarity on the IMF program.
After the fourth review, assuming that that went through, that's based on June 2016 data. Okay? Now, and that's what I'm, I'm saying. So did the seven billion or uh, pile up in just the six months of the second half of 2016 or not? So it's an important uh, thing out there. But assuming that uh, we've been able to understand how it doesn't affect this fourth review, then we have the fifth review as programmed. Now, the fifth review is supposed to be on the performance as of December 2016. And we know from what has been revealed that we went way off. So you are now going to start the race way behind. So if you are going to keep pace with your regional schedules, it means that we've got to put the brakes on even more sharply than what we had before. I don't believe that the austerity, remember this, that fiscal consolidation is a nice technical word, expression for austerity. And if you watch what's happening to the Greeks and so on, this is not something to be taken lightly. So there's too much poverty for us to also play with austerity. Um, the fund program anticipated that we'll look at the bottom pile and do something with e e things like LEAP and, and expanding health and so on. So, so if the new government is going to keep up with the schedules, original schedules, I'm afraid that the extent of the consolidation, yes, we must take it seriously, but I don't believe that we can aspire to clean up the, the, the divergence as of uh, December 2016 that quickly. So for me, we need to make it slowly. We need to focus our minds that it is about debt. It's about how do you finance your deficit. If you're going to be borrowing, then remember this that um, it means that your debt may not be declining and sooner or later if uh, lenders begin to be fearful then to refinance you they're going to ask for more interest we can't afford it meanwhile economist professor godfred buckman on his part maintains that another area of concern is budget deficits the policy rate is heading downwards and all of that that is quite good but there's a limit to how far they can go and therefore I expect that the review would look at some of the macro targets and because especially in terms of revenue projections and all of that and then come out to something that is quite realistic. Do you think that we need to revise our macroeconomic targets? I think that there would have to be some uh, revisions to to some of the targets especially along the side of revenue because the, we've sat, the evidence is the, the, the first quarter, the second quarter in terms of government revenue performance and all of that but thankfully now that uh, we are picking up in terms of hydrocarbon production okay in terms of our oil, oil export and all of that fine we are also seeing that there's something there so i think that government is in a better position to be able to look at all the data and say that okay these are the target that we have made now still on the economy Government says it is working with the Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, to intensify tax compliance measures to help meet revenue targets for the year. This follows its inability to meet revenue targets for the first four months of this year. We're trying to link up with uh, Joy Business News editor George Raffi, who is currently stationed in the business district of Accra, to bring us some updates. As and when we get through to him, we'll definitely um, link up for some updates. But moving on, in 2016... Four army worm infestation destroyed 4,500 hectares of farmlands in Ghana. Currently, an estimated 20,000 hectares of farm fields have been infected, up from about 1,400 hectares as of April this year. Maize, Kalpi, and some cocoa farms within the Bonahafu, Ashanti, and Western regions have been have most been affected, running losses of running into thousands of Ghana seed losses. The Agric Ministry had emphasized measures were in place to forestall the situation which farmers described as a disaster. Among the set measures is the mass spraying exercise still underway across the country. Although there are still reports of a spread of the invasion, the Greek ministry says the, the situation is under control. We're now crossing over live to Charles Aite, who is engaging or is going to engage the General Secretary of the General Agricultural Workers Union, Edward Caraway, for some updates.
Absolutely, Emmanuel Awaji, we are currently at the Swiss Spirit Alisa Hotel here in Accra, where we did catch up with the General Secretary of the General Agri Workers Union. And the entire issue, as you have rightly stated, is about the four army worm invasion, which is feared to have invaded several hectares of land in the Upper East region and continues to bear its teeth in the agri sector. We're here to find out from Gao exactly what is happening and the true figures as it's stand now. Many thanks, sir, for your time here on Marketplace. First of all, help us understand the true state of the four army worm invasion in Ghana today. Well, um, the state is that the number of hectares that have been invaded continue to increase day by day. You know, we all started by saying that only some few thousands of hectares have been uh, invaded. Uh, 5,000 to 10,000, and now we are over 100,000 hectares of uh, farmlands that have been invaded by the army. Worm. That is the true state of the of the of the situation on the ground. Uh, our checks, and together with that of the CSIL, does indicate that Ghana government has lost in excess of 64 million dollars in the wake of this very invasion. What 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 does Gawa have to say about this? Is this more or is less? Well, I would think that these are even conservative uh, figures, you know, in the sense that uh, uh, by the time or, or they, are, they are temporary figures, they are, they are provisional figures, they are not conclusive, uh, and by the time probably we'll be able to deal with the uh, fall army worm, we'll be losing up to 100 million uh, Ghana cities worth of uh, uh, farmlands and produce and so on. So the figures are right. The... The fact that uh, we are unable to control it and the fact that it is destroying the core of our economy, the fact that it is also destroying the foundation upon which uh, a new model of modernization and industrialization of our economy is based on is uh, critical. And uh, if that foundation is shaken to its uh, base, then of course uh, it will be very difficult to uh, realize the dreams that we have to modernize our economy and to industrialize our economy uh, per the general policy framework of the government. Speaking from the, point, uh, from the viewpoint of Gao, what best practi practical steps do you think government should have to employ in dealing with the four army worm invasion once and for all? Well, let me state that uh, my understanding is that uh, not all the 16 million Ghana cities was used to purchase uh, uh, insecticides for the fall army worm. Part of it was used, but part was also used for education and sensitization and so on. Well, you know, the fact is that it appears to me that they have rushed into a battle that they were not well prepared for. In the when you say the animal were prepared for, what do you mean? Yeah, in the sense that this is a, a worm that was little known about. You know, they did not know its characteristics. They did not know the particular chemicals that are potent enough to deal with it, you know. And then uh, who has to deal with it? Is it just forming some gangs from Accra who then move from region to region and looking for places where the army worm is to uh, uh, spray? You know, all these things put together, you know, for me, appears we did not position ourselves well to fight the army worm. And that is why, uh, since then, uh, we have not been able to contain it, and it has been making progress and invading more farms and so on. So speaking from the point of view of Gawo, how best do you think government should have to tackle the situation? Well, one, what that's, we are saying that we should declare a state of emergency. A state of emergency here will allow us to mobilize all resources, logistics, and uh, uh, human resources to Im attack and respond to the fall army when within two weeks, three weeks, we'll be able to deal with it. For instance, uh, if you get the military, which is very efficient and uh, dutiful, and then you give them some uh, 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 one week training as to how to spray but then you deploy them alongside other personnel to go to all the regions at a particular time within two weeks 
operation with, uh, in the whole country, then they will be able to subdue it. But you don't need to uh, attack the fall army when from one region to another, or you then wait until you see it appearing, or you get information that, oh, a farm somewhere is being attacked, therefore you now want to send a team there, to mobilize and send a team there. That type of uh, operational strategy uh, w w may not be so effective. And that's why we are thinking that if we say within three weeks we must deal with it uh, uh, effectively by mobilizing all the resources, mobilizing all the personnel, and then deploying them within two weeks, they are op or spraying and operating at the same time throughout the country. That will be the best way to just deal with it uh, effectively. One of the uh, crops that have been largely affected is that of maize, and we do know that maize is a major staple here in Ghana. And the issue, therefore, of food security comes up tall. Where do you think the issue of food security here in Ghana stands in the in the wake of this very situation, the four army worm invasion? Well, food security is generally a problem. Even if you look at our production system. Uh, there's no particular year that from the beginning of the production season one can guarantee that uh, we would not have food shortage and so on. Because we depend largely on uh, the natural factors. Uh, this time too, unfortunately, whilst we are uh, making effort through the planting for food and jobs and to increase food production, then this disaster has come. So it is possible and highly possible, I say, that uh, we may have a, a food shortage by the end of the, day, the year. That is the reality. So government must not be in denial of the realities. They should rather accept the realities and let us jointly see how we are going to deal with the fall army worm decisively and effectively. Thank you very much, Edward Kyra. That was the General Secretary of the General Agri Workers Union there sharing with us key concerns in the wake of the four army worm invasion across several farm, farmlands, hundreds of thousands of them, he does tell me. And of course, we shall be following closely this very situation and giving you updates as and when we do have them, Emmanuel. Thank you very much, Charles IT. Charles IT bringing us up to speed with the situation of the four army worm invasion, he's been speaking with the general secretary of the General Agricultural Workers Union, GAU, and he's been preparing some solutions to this current development. Now, moving on, thanks to innovation, you can seek medical attention anywhere you find yourself. Now, um, this is a repeat of the Joy Business Van and Tech Startup Doctor Group Limited features with the introduction of their Doctor Ghana app, which hopes to open a new page for healthcare delivery in the country. Okay, but you haven't taken any medicines yourself, I hope. Um, just a painkiller. Just a painkiller. Okay, so that's okay. But you don't have any, you are not vomiting, you don't have any stomach pains, no diarrhea. For a doctor who is looking for an easy way to reach out to her patients, the Dr. Ghana app works perfectly for Dr. Nash Levanderpoy. The app was developed by three tech startups, Cedric Fuji, Serge Zeppa, and Kojo Sefa. Cedric conceived the idea a couple of years ago, but he had nursed a passion for quality health care and technology from childhood. Uh, I grew up with a mom that was always sick. She had a, de a debilitating disease, so she couldn't complete school, she couldn't, she couldn't work. And so I knew the importance of good health uh, to somebody's future. And so I always knew I wanted to be in health care. But of course, as I started growing up, you know, I developed an affinity uh, for technology, and I knew that for me to be able to do what I want to do and scale it, I need uh, uh, technology. Cedric shared his idea of a doctor app with two college friends, Serge and Kojo, and they got on board almost immediately. Right, immediately what I thought was, in my mind, anybody can make money. There's multiple ways of making money out there. However, when you can make a difference at the same time, that for me was the point where I was like, you know, back home in our, in our continent. It's a real issue, all right, that we can improve the lives of millions of people by, you know, kind of using this technology to, you know, help out with our uh, patient to doctor ratio and all that kind of stuff. So for me, that was the catalyst to being like, whatever it takes, this has to work. Poised to make an impact on the continent, the trio, who are in the United States, needed to take a decision on which country to begin from. 
pretty dicey a decision for Cedric and Serge, both Cameroonian and Kojo Ghanaian. They would eventually settle on Ghana. Ghana has a growing population. We have a lot of young people. And the good thing is I went to college here. I went to the University of Ghana, so I know how people are picking up on smartphones and all of that. And looking at the dynamics of the business world, everything is going digital. And Ghana is really moving up quick to that side of the um, business world. And it is true. Ghanaians are ranked amongst the highest mobile app users on the continent. It was a good place to test this innovation. It took two years to develop the Dr. Ghana app. Here's the interface of the app. So you see it's a very simple and beautiful design. To request an appointment is very easy. So you just click on the blue uh, button right here. And then this legal disclaimer just says, you know, if you're dying, go straight to the hospital. But for our purposes here, you would just click no. And then here you simply select your date, okay? And then your primary concern, let's say diarrhea. And then you click on find to find what doctor that you want to have your appointment with. And then you can just select your time. So let's say we're selecting 2.45 p.m. And then that's about it. The app was officially launched in June this year. Hundreds of Ghanaians already signed on to it and are able to access healthcare for a fee. That is how the startup makes money. Not only is it convenient for users, doctors like Nash Levanderpoi believe it's the future of healthcare delivery. It will take time, but I think um, at least in the urban cities where people tend to be very busy, you know, and don't want to go and join long queues in the hospitals, but at the same time, you know, are well educated enough to know that, you know, it might be risky if I didn't consult uh, a medical person. I think that target group is what, you know, this might be beneficial to. They are the ones that I think as we move on, we'll be making more and more um, use of it. Upon a successful rollout in Ghana, developers of the Doctor app hope to exploit potential in other African countries. Right now we projecting that in the next 15 years we will have 100 million people on the platform and that means that we have to expand into other African countries. And so the first expansion strategy is to do the West African sub-region and then once we get that we move into other um, sub-regions of the continent. In Africa, more than any other place in the world, we can't afford to have a sick care system where people are always going to the hospital. It's very expensive. So we have to become very, very good at helping people take care of themselves from home. And that's empowering them to make the right decisions every single day. So uh, the future for us, as you said, uh, is, is extremely bright. And so I'll tell everybody, just, just watch out for us. It's indeed a new day for healthcare delivery in Ghana. Catch another story of the Joy Business Van next Wednesday on Joy Business on Business Live with a repeat on the marketplace. Let's now take a break for an investment tip courtesy Darwin Finance. Investment tips is brought to you by Darwin Finance, deposits, investments, borrowings, and advisory. The investment constraints, the time horizon. What is the time horizon implication? This deals with the time or period associated with an investment objective. It can be short term, long term, or a combination of the two. Investment Tips was brought to you by Dauphin Finance. Deposits, investments, borrowings and advisory. You welcome back. Now, door hinges, bolts and nuts are common accessories used in the local construction industry. Unfortunately, the once booming trade is suffering a downturn as to why Joy News Kwesi Debra has filed this report. Alex Kofi dropped out of school in his teenage to learn a trade as a blacksmith at Swami Magazine. 
It's been 20 years since he completed his apprenticeship, having specialized in the manufacture of boots and nuts. Government had, in the past, provided avenue for his products. The story, however, is different today. I always uh, manufacture boots and nuts. That is the way we always do. So then time, the government will always help us to get a lot of jobs to do in the shop. Bolts and knots, center bolts, uh, block extension, and a lot of things. We have a lot of work to do. Uh, we always form bulging pins, which they use to form gates, and some arrows. Uh, we have a lot of work to do in the blacksmith work. But a time ago, I could remember that uh, the, the work has dropped down, or the work has fallen. Why? Because in my side, I can say the import of, the, of those things, that break our job today. With the dwindling fortunes of boot and nuts business, Alex has now turned into manufacturer of door hinges. Somehow, that is beginning to suffer similar fate. Kwesia Pia is a building contractor who used to work with locally made boots and nuts and hinges. He stopped using them three years ago because his clients rather prefer imported materials for finishing. Besides, the local ones must be reworked. Yeah, and the local ones, you know, problem almost, you want to say, at times, and could be a problem. The local ones aren't well done. Clients always complain. All the time, they prefer the imported ones because they are smooth and have no rough edges. Adria Comfort says she was once contracted by foreign partners to stock foreign hinges, which she had initially rejected. She had to rescind her decision because of the demand for smoother and more shiny hinges. Imported hinge of this size goes for five cities and the local one for four cities. Ajwa says users are never bothered by the price difference. Clients always tell me the locally made hinges are time consuming, she says. I believe with enough machines, the local ones can become competitive. As government prepares to roll out initiatives for small and medium scale industries, finishing will be key. Will the local industry be able to compete effectively with the foreign ones? Your guess is as good as mine. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. Obviously, a clarion call to, for the revamp of the local construction industry. And on that note, we wrap up this afternoon's edition of the Marketplace. My name is Emmanuel Bwaji Riafe. Thanks so much for joining me. Do make a date at 5 p.m. where we bring you some more business on Business Live. Have a good afternoon.